We're coming to you today from the third floor of the Rhode Island State House in a segment we simply call Capital Spotlight. We'd like to take a member of the General Assembly and ask them a few questions about things they've been working on and uh, its possible impact on you, the Rhode Island citizen. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome, I believe, making his first appearance on Capital Spotlight. We're certainly glad to have him, the Honorable State Representative Jan Malik. Representative Malik, it's good to see you, sir. Good afternoon, Dave. How are you? In, in regular watchers of Capital TV get to see a lot, not only on the House floor, but you also serve on House Finance, and those meetings can sometimes be lengthy, and you're dealing with a lot of financial issues, so you're certainly no stranger to Capital Television. But let's talk a little bit about finance and the governor's budget. He has suggested that uh, we raise the meals and beverage tax here in the state. That's something that you're not too high on, correct? No, I'm not high on that at all. You know, I'm on a, I, I come from Warren, Barrington. I represent both those communities. They're on the border of Massachusetts, and it's going to put our businesses on that border at a disadvantage. There's many businesses already at a disadvantage, gas stations, my store, liquor stores, and then there's a bunch of others, you know. I honestly think that we have to look at this proposal and say, wait a second, what is Rhode Island? Rhode Island's made up of a bunch of small businesses, and we have to do things to make the businesses strive in this state, not hurt them. And I think that proposal will hurt. You know, so what, what about the, the people that say, oh, it's just a buck or two on a pizza, uh, it, it's really not that big a deal. Uh, what makes you think that it will have a big impact, especially on those border city businesses? Again, I see it firsthand, Dave. I'm at a 7% disadvantage. I saw what my business did the last year. I can't allow something to happen that's happening to me already in my family, in my store, happen to anybody else's business in the state of Rhode Island, and you lose customers. People do not want to pay a tax, and if they see they can get away without paying a tax or a higher tax, they are going to shop there. And you know the other thing that strikes me about it too, I think one of the great calling cards of uh, the Ocean State is the quality of restaurants and uh, uh, some of the great eateries that we have here in Rhode Island. It's a big part of our tourist trade and uh, a lot of people think that that tourism could be impacted. I agree with you wholeheartedly, but you know, I'm going to give a plug to the restaurants in the East Bay. We got a lot of great restaurants in the East Bay and guess what, it's just as easy to shop in Swansea or Seekonk, so people are going to look at that tax. And you know, you got all along the border here, when Socket, East Providence, Tiverton, even Portsmouth and Newport, this is going to affect. You, you know, the um, Hospitality Association's done a pretty good job of mounting a very visible and very vocal uh, opposition to this tax. Uh, I haven't heard too many people other than the governor's office come out in favor of it. I agree with you, because I, I think, you know, like you say, you expect the hospitality and people like myself that are in business to go against it, but other people against it, the people that are not willing to pay for this tax. And, and you're going to see it, like I said, I don't think it's going to happen. I hope it doesn't. I hope the leadership will listen to the people that, you know, represent the border states or the you know, border town, excuse me, and, 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 and just hear what we have to say. We had your colleague on Straight from the Gavel, John Carnavale, a few weeks ago, and he told me that he felt that this uh, idea was dead on arrival. Do you agree? Uh, well, I can't say that, but I, but I would hope so. You know, like I said, I have a lot of faith in the leadership up here at the State House. You know, uh, Speaker Fox and his team and stuff like that, and they do listen. Like I said, there's a lot of people out there struggling in business now. I think he understands the business model, even though he's a lawyer. You know, he understands what it takes to run a business, and I don't think he's for seeing businesses be at a disadvantage. Representative Malik, tell us too about a bill that you have that would expedite people getting disability license plates for their vehicles. Uh, I know that's something that's important to you. Yeah, it's, it's important to myself. You know, it helps out to the, the seniors in the state and anybody with a little disability. What it does is it's a, it's a plaque card that you're going to receive from your doctor or nurse practitioner. They'll give you a 21-day uh, card to park in a handicapped parking before you get that from the registry, the full-time plaque. 
I found out that people are having a hard time, you know, it takes three weeks to receive that plaque card. So this is just going to fill that gap. So when you leave that doctor's office, you will be able to park in a CVS parking lot, the handicap, to go in and get your prescriptions, or wherever else you have to park. Well, well, it seems really practical, Representative, because the person's at the doctor's office because they have a problem right then and there, and, uh, you know, waiting three weeks doesn't help them out very much. No, you're correct, and that's why, like I said, why does the doctor have to fill out the paperwork, send it to the registry, and, and those people that need it have to wait three weeks? That's why, like I said, this plan here gives them 21 days, and, and I'm hoping that 21 days is enough that the registry will send it back, their, their, their personal handicap play, maybe for six months or, or a year, and, and there won't be no interval that a person has to struggle to try to find rides to the doctor's office or to pharmacists and stuff like that to be able to park there. Representative Malik, I mentioned you're on House Finance. You're very busy. I appreciate you taking time out of your very busy schedule to chat with us here on Capital Spotlight. My best to you and the colleagues in the House. Dave, thank you very much. And thanks, of course, to you folks for watching. You make it all possible from the third floor of the Rhode Island State House. I'm Capital Television's Dave Barber.